good morning everyone in today's video i'll be talking about uh, correlation once again carl pearson's coefficient of correlation i have already uploaded a video with the manual calculation and i'll tell you how to do this particular part in excel so uh, let's talk about carl pearson's coefficient of correlation it is highlighted right here carl pearson's coefficient of correlation and uh, what actually carl pearson coefficient of correlation is the Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation actually tells you the strength of a relationship that how strongly uh, the variables are related to each other. Now in this particular example I'm going to check the correlation between two different data sets though this, this is a pretty small data set. Uh, I have got uh, marks in history of six students one two three four five students and marks in mathematics of five students. And a logical uh, way of thinking is that if somebody is doing good his in history, he may not be doing that good in mathematics. So that's a logical establishment of relationship which I have done. Now I'm going to check how strong this logical relationship which I have established is. So Carl Pearson correlation of co correlation doesn't actually initiate or establishes the relationship from the scratch. You must have a suitable logic behind it. But it checks the uh, strength of that particular relationship. So anyways means if you type in random numbers in two different series then it is going to give you a correlation coefficient but that doesn't mean that the variables are related all together so what i'm, what I'm saying is there should, should be a suitable logic behind that how the two variables are related to each other and then by using carl pearson's coefficient of correlation you can check its strength uh, there are uh, six assumptions of carl pearson's coefficient of correlation which are mentioned here i'll just rewrite them assumptions of Carl's coefficient so these are the six assumptions of Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation in which he actually mentioned about uh, normality homoscedasticity linearity, continuity, paired observation and no outliers. So I'm assuming the data is normal right now. You can check the normality also, but not in this video. I'm not going to go for it. Homoscedasticity, I'll tell you through scatter plot how you can actually see that particular thing. Then linearity, I'm going to check it again through a diagram called scatter plot. Continuity, that means the variables involved are supposed to be continuous in nature. So for this particular thing, I'm assuming that these variables are continuous in nature. That means marks can be given in points. Paired observations, of course, all six are paired observation. That means for each student, I have a pair of observation. Student one scoring six in history, nine in mathematics. Student second is scoring two in history, 11 in mathematics and so on. So observations are also paired. That is already checked. There are no outliers. I'm going to show you through graph again. So I'm assuming the data is normally distributed. I'm assuming the variable is continuous. I know the observations exist in pair and homoscedasticity, linearity and no outliers I'm going to check through scatter plot. So whenever you have a data it is always advisable to plot it so I'm going to create a scatter plot out of this data. Normally in correlation we assume that one variable is dependent on another and y is generally the dependent variable. It's not necessary that you all the time call it y but uh, it's a general notation which is standard notation which is used worldwide that y is a <coughs> dependent variable on x. y depends on x. That means here marks in mathematics will depend on how the marks, how some student is scoring in history. So let's check uh, through scatter plot. So I select the entire data, I go to insert, and then there is this direct plugin scatter plot, and then to do it, it immediately plots it. Excel by default understands the series y is dependent and x is independent, so it is plotting series x on x axis and y on y axis, and uh, so it is taking dependent on. Uh, y and independent on x and okay i'm going to add a trend line this is the linear trend line which i have added and i'll just do a little bit little more things i'll add the excess title horizontal so these are marks in history that is being represented by x so this is the x-axis and uh, when i go to y-axis uh, Okay, vertical marks in mathematics, that is series Y, which is depending on X. That means if uh, I just want to look into this data and I want to know that uh, if somebody is doing, so I'll, I'll just uh, um, give it a rename 
relationship or I'll say I'll write it scatter plot that sounds a better name so uh, let's let's see how the things are checked uh, normality I was already assumes homoscedasticity means the linearity that means this particular line is representing trend then variance on both sides of these particular dots is not supposed to be uh, very huge that means if I look into the line, I will assume that this dot is somewhere on the line. So two dots are above line, two dots are below the line. And if you look into the variance, they are, it is more or less same. This point has similar variance as this and this point has similar variance as this. So this is called homoscedasticity. And uh, there are uh, mathematical ways to check it, but we will talk about it later. Linearity, the whole data can be represented through a straight line. So there is a linear trend in the data which exists then comes no outlier so i am not seeing any data which is or any of the dots which is pretty much away from the line that means i'm not having a dot here or here somewhere which are on uh, at extreme or significantly at a large distance from the line so there is there are no outliers other than in the data paired observations exist the i'm assuming the variables are continuous linearity the whole data set the whole scatter plot can be represented through a, a line straight line almost scadacity that means uh, on both sides of the trend, the variance is more or less same. Normality, I'm assuming the data is normal. All six conditions met. Let's calculate the Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. And uh, OK. The command is pretty simple. You just start typing COR, it pops up. I need to take series 1, comma, series 2. So you click and hold your left mouse button, or you can use shift and down key. You just, if the formula is that simple, there's no need to close the parenthesis. But if you wish to, just close the parenthesis and hit return. So it tells you negative 0.919. So it's a negative correlation, which is very, very strong. Uh, so that means both variables are, negativity means both variables are moving in opposite direction. That means if marks in history are increasing, then marks in mathematics are going to reduce. Now I'm going to tell, talk about one more uh, <coughs> concept, which is coefficient of determination given by r square so it simply can be calculated r you can square it cap 2 so i've selected the cell in r square that's it so it just gives you 84.5 or converted into percentage already uh, so you can see that 84.5 percent now what does it mean try to understand mark my words <clears throat> this means the coefficient of determination simply means that the 84.5% variation in dependent variable is caused by independent variable in this case, while rest of the nearly 16% variation is caused by due to other factors. I am repeating it. Uh, the variation in marks of mathematics of a student has a 84.5% impact of marks in history, while rest of the 16% impact could be due to other reasons, But whatever these reasons are. So that's it for this particular video. Please uh, subscribe, hit like and share this video as much as you can. And for uh, manual calculation, I've already uploaded a video of correlation. You can check it. Thank you very much.